This is a video about the concepts of a transformation being onto or one-to-one. -one. These terms describe the existence and uniqueness of solutions under the particular transformation. They are important to understand since they tell us a lot about the transformation we are using. Both of these concepts can be difficult to understand in the abstract setting of multidimensional linear algebra, so I will start by showing what they mean in one dimension and then generalize. In the end, we will see that both characterizations can be determined by looking at the echelon form of the transformation matrix. So let's start by looking at what the term onto actually means. A transformation T from Rn to Rm is onto Rm if every vector B in Rm is the image of some x in Rn. So let's look at what this means in one dimension. So in one dimension, our transformation is going to be from the set of real numbers to real numbers. So the way we can draw this is with a plot like this, where we have x on the x-axis and the image of x under this transformation on the y. So keep in mind, this is not a two-dimensional plot, it's one-dimensional, where the values we choose are x, and the result of the transformation is along the y-axis, on B. So our transformation, let's say, is a line, and we can see that with an appropriate choice of x, we can get to any value along the y-axis by applying this transformation. So for this value of x, we're going to get to this value of y, for this one we get to this one, and so on. For any value, we can eventually get to any value of B. And therefore, we can, we can get to the entire y-axis, and this transformation is onto. Alternatively, consider this transformation, which is, by the way, not linear, a parabola. And in this case, we can really only get to the values of b that are in here, above this parabola, for any choice of x, we'll only get to those values and we'll never get to the values below. Therefore, this transformation is not onto, because not every vector b is the image of some vector x. So in general, we can see that a transformation is onto if the range of the transformation is the entire codomain. In this case, the codomain is all real numbers, and in, and in this one, we cannot get to all those real numbers in the y-axis, whereas in the first one, we could. So in general, a transformation from Rn to Rm, which can be characterized by a transformation matrix, if it's a linear transformation, and that's what we're going to be looking at. This example was just to illustrate this in one dimension, but in, we're going to be looking at linear transformation, so therefore a transformation matrix A applies. We're going to look at the augmented matrix, like this, with the coefficients here, the transformation matrix, and the augmented solution vector, and we're going to see, is this consistent for all B in Rm? And this is a definition of onto. If it's consistent for all B, that means that we can get to every B as the image of this transformation. So suppose that we have a matrix like this, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3, 0, which is the reduced matrix A, then the augmented matrix that we might have would be like this, and let's put on a solution vector of this form, just 1, 1, 1, that's what we're trying to get to. So this is the solution vector B. This is clearly inconsistent. 
because of the last line. Therefore, it is not onto. We cannot get to this B using this transformation A because of this inconsistent last line. Suppose instead that we had this matrix. So now we're going from R4, since we have four columns, to R3. Then the augmented matrix. Suppose again our solution is 1, 1, 1. This is consistent for all B. Therefore, it's onto. So we can what we can see from this is that we must to be onto, we must have a pivot in every row. And we could see this uniquely from the reduced form of the matrix A itself without even augmenting a solution. Because when we have this row of zeros, that means that there is some solution we can put on which is going to make this inconsistent. But if we have no zeros, no rows of zeros, but a pivot in every row, then we're going to get a solution for every B. So altogether, we can see that the reduced form of the augmented matrix must be consistent for all B. Additionally, we can see that for a tall matrix, where the matrix is M by N, and M is greater than N, this cannot be onto. Since we can't have a pivot in every row. So this has been a look at what it means to be onto. Now let's look at one to one. A transformation T from Rn to Rm is one to one if every vector b in Rm is the image of at most 1x in Rn. So again, let's start by looking at one dimension. In one dimension, again, our transformation is from real numbers to real numbers. And let's look at the same thing that we had before, a line. So now we're considering a slightly different question. We're considering is B the image of at most 1x in Rn? So now we're going to start by looking at values on the y-axis and determine do they come from a unique x? And in this case, this comes from here, this comes from here, this value comes from here. And we can see that in general, a unique x provides a given value of B. And therefore, all of these values are provided by unique values of x. This transformation is 1 to 1. Let's take a look at our other example. In this case, if we look at a particular value of y, we can see that it actually comes from two values of x. And therefore, these values of y were not provided by distinct unique values of x. And this transformation is not one to one. Now in general, for a given transformation, T from Rn to Rm, and again, now we're looking at linear transformations. This is characterized by the transformation matrix acting on x, so Ax. We're going to again look at the augmented matrix, A with B, and now the question is, does this have any free variables? Because if it does, that means that we do not have a unique x creating every image b in Rm. So let's take a look at some examples. If our matrix 
is this once again then we can have an augmented matrix of this form so this is consistent but we see right away that we have a free variable and therefore we know that that means that we have an infinite number of solutions that is an infinite number of X's in RN create the same B in RM therefore this is not one to one. If, however, our matrix was instead one zero 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 one zero, this is once again the reduced form of the transformation matrix A, then an augmented matrix could be one zero 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 one zero one one zero where this is again our appended B so in this case we see that we have a unique solution in this particular case and in general what we have here in general is a unique solution X in RN or no solution if this is an inconsistent equation for a particular B for all B in RM and therefore this is one to one so what we've seen here generally is that for it to be one-to-one -one, we must have a pivot in every column. So altogether then we see that the reduced form of the augmented matrix must have a unique solution or no solution for all B in order for this to be one-to-one. -one. And this can once again be told just by looking at the reduced form of the transformation matrix A and looking whether it has a pivot in every column. And again, as a generalization here, we can see that a wide matrix, where the matrix is m by n, with n greater than m this time, this cannot be one to one, since we cannot have a pivot in every column. So we can see that we generalized for onto and one to one to tall matrices and wide matrices. But it is important to remember that in the case of onto, we said that a tall matrix cannot be onto, but we don't know anything about whether it can be one to one or not. That has to be determined. And same with a wide matrix. It cannot be one to one, but we don't know if that necessarily means that it's onto or not. That has to also be determined. So altogether, we have seen how to determine whether a transformation is onto or one-to-one -one in any dimension by studying the reduced form of the transformation matrix. Even though you can now determine these properties in an easier way, I hope that this video has helped you better understand what they truly mean and where the reduced matrix characterization comes from.